Hey everyone, today we are making basic white bread. I usually make sourdough, you've probably seen my videos for that, but in case you don't have sourdough on hand, um, it's really easy to make bread at home. It tastes better, I think, and I don't know, there's some satisfaction making it yourself. Uh, you will need a little bit of time, but not much. Usually it's in active time because a lot of times it's rising, um, but to mix it up is really simple and not complicated. So I'm gonna walk you through the steps, and hopefully you will have a couple beautiful loaves of bread when you're finished, okay? So the ingredients you're gonna need are, of course, flour, bread flour if you have it, but regular flour like I'm using today is just fine. Salt, I like pink salt. Yeast, just traditional yeast, you can find in a jar or packages. Oil, I like olive oil, but you can use vegetable oil or canola oil. Some sugar, and some uh, rental wrap if you have it, or we call it cling wrap. Um, but if not, just a towel will work too. Here you need a bread, bread pan or a loaf pan. You can form loaves too and put it on a, a cookie sheet if you don't have a bread pan. It's really easy. It's hard to mess this up, um, and it's super simple. So we're gonna go through the steps. I'll have some on and off video here because it does take time in between. But let's start with your warm water. You're gonna take two and a fourth cups of warm water. And the warm water should be to where you can put your finger in it, and it's not like burning your finger, but it's warmer than room temperature. So that's one, two, and a fourth. Oops, a little smidgy more there. Pour that out. All right, and next you're gonna grab a teaspoon, and you're going to get two and a fourth teaspoon dry yeast. And you're gonna to wanna to activate your yeast, so that's what we're doing now. We're starting with the water and yeast, and that will help it rise. You wanna make sure your yeast is active. So I will show you what that looks like. So two and a fourth teaspoons yeast. And then you're gonna let that sit, and I forget the fancy term for it, like bloom or something like that. And then you're gonna come back. So I will be right back after my blooms. Okay, so we are only at five minutes in and you can already see the yeast coming alive. So you know your yeast is good and ready to go. Um, you can add a pinch of sugar to your water and yeast to get it rolling a little bit faster. Um, but you don't have to either. But you see all that little action happening there? <laughs> that means you have good yeast. Okay, so the yeast is ready. It was nice and bubbly, and it's got a nice little bloom on top of it. So this yeast is good. You're gonna next wanna start by adding the sugar, which is a fourth cup of sugar. You can do this if you have a stand mixer. Um, you can mix it up in your stand mixer in the bowl, um, and then use the hook. Use very simple um, utensils to make bread. So you got your sugar in, and the next thing you're going to add is one tablespoon of salt. Put it in there. It's a nice, beautiful, sunny day. I like to rise mine in the oven. If you have littles running around like I do, you're gonna wanna let them know you're making bread so they're not gonna make it go flat. But you wanna find either a nice, sunny, warm spot in your home. Um, over a heat vent sometimes can work, but I usually warm up my oven to where I can keep my hand in there so it's nice and warm, but not too warm. And then I let it rise in my oven. So once you have your salt and your sugar in there, you're going to put your oil in there. Or with two tablespoons of oil. Again, I'm using olive oil, but you can use canola or vegetable if that's what you have. That works too. Um, if you're mixing this in a mixing bowl, I wouldn't start mixing until you have your flour in, which is our next step. We're going to add four cups of flour to start. Um, just so we kind of get it moving without being too watery or too stiff because then I usually go to mixing with my hands, which you can do at the beginning if you like. Just four cups. Grab my wooden spoon and mix her together. Um, if you have any rings on your hands, you might want to take those off because it's going to get a little sticky for a bit. You know, make sure you have a clean working surface because 
Um, we're gonna put this on the table in between and then oil our bowl up before we let it rise. Or you can simply lift it. Um, so it's starting to get mixed up like that. It's still a little bit, like it has a little bit of wetness to it yet. So then you can go ahead and add some more flour. You're gonna wanna add anywhere from five and a half to six and a half cups of flour all together. And you don't want it to be dry um, or too sticky. So you're kind of looking for a happy medium. You kind of want it to um, kind of stick, be sticky to the touch, but not leaving dough on your fingers is kind of the rule of thumb. So that's kind of how it's going to look. And I'm going to get my hands in there from this point on. I'll take my ring off. Stuff out of the way. You can put a little bit of oil on your hands if you want. Um, it might help from not sticking. You don't like things stuck to you. So this is the part that really takes a little bit to get going, but then the rest is just basically rising time. You're gonna have a time of kneading in between the two rising times. Um, but it's not really labor intensive. It's just really mixing and kneading. This needs a little bit more flour. So you see it's sticking and leaving dough in my hand. You don't want that. Start by adding a half cup here. Let's see if we need some more. So if you're a first time bread maker, let me know how this turns out for you. You can post a picture below or tag me on Instagram or Facebook. Um, I'd love to see how your loaves turn out. If you've been making bread for a long time and you have a favorite recipe, um, please share it below because those are always fun to try out. I know I was looking at a few recipes today when I was wanting to do this video and there's some that you just uh, mix up real easy with like three to four ingredients, but they have to rise like overnight in some, you know, if you're a first time, first time homemaker, first time bread maker, that seems like a lot, long time, but it's really not because it just sits, it rises from eight to 12 hours and then you bake it up after that. So it's even less, more, less work than this is because it sits and you just basically stir it together. So those are fun breads to make too. But some of them called for Dutch ovens, even though you can use a roasting pan. Now I'm talking too much, too much information. But anyways, there's a bunch of recipes out there. So this one doesn't float your boat. Find another one. I figured right now is a good time to teach someone how to make bread easily and with ingredients you likely have in your home already or you can get your hands on pretty easily. Um, if your grocery stores out of bread right now, um, you can find flour usually. Um, if you have a mill close by you, they're a great resource for finding flour and uh, likely have large bags, which is good. It helps to keep bread in the house. And you can get muffins and cookies and all kinds of things, right? So that is pretty much how we want it to look. It's slightly sticky. My hands are loaded with dough from before, um, but it's slightly sticky and not really leaving anything on the hands. If it's too sticky at this point, um, you will want to keep adding a little bit of flour. I actually might add a little bit more here, just to make sure it's not my hands. Um, but if it's too sticky at this point, it's going to be way too sticky at the next point. Which, no biggie. I will show you how to avoid that issue too. Um, have some oil on hand for that. Because um, it's still doable. So, enjoy the process. I like doing this. Turn some music on usually. The kids love to help knead and stir things together, add the flour. A little girl wanted to help me with it today. She's a little disappointed I wasn't having her in the video, but sometimes that can be chaotic. So they are happily playing upstairs. Okay, that's much better. See, it's not really leaving anything in my hands. No. <laughs> I'm gonna get all these crumbs off. I'm gonna oil up this bowl, and then we're gonna get her rising. Okay. Kinda cleaned up here. I'm gonna grab my oil. You lift up your dough here, again, and show you better. Kind of turn it 
and it's not leaving any dough on the hands, right? That's what you want. It's a little sticky, but not too sticky. So you're just gonna grease your bowl just a little bit, and then rub it around the bowl. I use the same one. Some people wanna get king bowls. I just use the same one. Put a dab more in there. Oop, a little bit more in a dab. Anyway, so then you put your dough in, kinda of smush it in there, and then turn it over again. So you're gonna cover that with saran wrap and you're gonna let it rise until it is double its size. And then I'll be back. So I do double this here. Again, you can just use a towel. Um, I just find this keeps the heat or moisture, I guess, locked in here a little bit more, um, helping it to rise. But what I used to do is just get a cloth, a dish towel, wet it with warm water and put it over the top. Um, and that worked fantastic too. Just sometimes if you don't have enough space in between the wet towel and your dough, it's gonna stick to your cloth and it's a real pain to get off. So if you have saran wrap, it's an easy cleanup. Some people even spray the saran wrap. I don't bother with that. So I'll be back for our next step. It's been about an hour and as you can see, the dough has risen nicely. So we're gonna take that out, uh, punch down, knead it, and put it in the loaf pans and let it rise one more time. Okay, so it was a little bit over an hour. As you can see, the dough has risen quite a bit. So what you're gonna do, make sure your rings are off again. You're gonna want some oil, at least I use oil. Some people like flour, I like oil. Um, you're gonna punch it down. So just simply shove your knuckle in, punch it down, just like that. I put some oil on the table and on my hands. And you're gonna divide, see how easily it comes out of the bowl. Divide this up into two pieces. So this will make us two loaves of bread. Before I get going too much, I'm gonna oil up my pans. I simply just add a good dab of oil, not too much, and then I spread it out. You can get fancy and use a pastry brush or whatever they call it for spreading it into your pans. Um, I don't, I just oil them really good so that your bread doesn't stick. If you have like pan spray or something like that, you can spray them as well. Uh, and then we're gonna knead the bread a bit. And then put them in the pans and they will rise again. So you're just gonna wanna kinda get the air bubbles out. So if you've never kneaded bread before, you kinda put your palm in and turn it over. Some people do their knuckles and turn it over, it's kind of fun. You, you did this with Play-Doh Play when you are younger. <laughs> you just keep kneading it. Um, you're gonna wanna have a warm oven again for them to sit and rise. And then after that, you're going to bake them. And it's gonna be a, an oven of 375 and um, to take about 30 minutes, I think. Thirty to 35. Keep kneading. <laughs> Some people do this differently. This is how I do it. Some people make it into like a rectangle or whatever and roll it up. I don't do that either. I just kind of knead it till it doesn't sound like there's any more air bubbles in there turning it over and then just form like that. Some people have a seam when they fold it over. I don't really do that. And then I just simply plop it in the pan. You can top it with a little bit more oil if you like. I figure there's enough on there now. <laughs> Again, make sure your hands are rolled up and to look too. So super easy guys. This does not, it's not hard. It takes time. Like you had your time for mixing, you had to wait for the yeast to uh, proof, and then of course your time for rising, which is a little bit over an hour, depending on the warmth of your home or your oven. And then we'll have another hour here where it rises again. You just want it to come a little bit over the pan. Uh, the longer you wait, sometimes the higher it gets, but it will also rise a little bit when you're baking it. So don't worry too much. You could make buns out of this by simply getting a piece like that, squeezing it out, 
putting it on top of uh, grease tray or a tray with parchment paper and baking them for a much shorter time, of course. Um, and you wouldn't have to let them rise for an hour either. Maybe I'll do another, another video showing you that later. But great for making hamburger buns or rolls. Super easy. So I know it can be intimidating if you've never made bread before, but it really is quite simple and does not take many ingredients. If you have a bread maker like I do, it's even faster. And uh, if you want to know how to make sourdough bread, you can go to the blog where it's all on there how to do the starter. It's just basically water and flour for a few days. Super easy. A little bit of sugar, but here you go. We're going to put both of these back in the oven to rise. So I'm putting in a warm oven and put some plastic wrap. I'm using the same ones I had before, so half and half. And again, if you don't have any cling wrap, you can use a warm, wet towel. Just know that um, you're going to want to, um, <laughs> it's going to be a little bit of a mess to clean up. And even these, if you have spray or oil, actually I might just oil these up like this. Um, you're going to want to grease it a little bit so that it doesn't stick when you're taking them out. But it does help it rise a little bit nicer um, if you've got the plastic wrap on it. So here's my simple way of making bread. And I'll show you what it looks like once it's risen. A little much. And then uh, we'll bake her up and show you how it is then once it's done. All right. We'll see you in a little bit. It is about 11 minutes before the bread is done rising. As you can see, it's gotten pretty large. I'm carefully going to remove the plastic wrap. I'll hold the video and do this at the same time. Let them finish rising, and then we'll turn the oven on. It smells really good in here. There's the bread. It's a little flatter on the top because of the kids. I had to let it rise a little bit too long. And it tends to happen, but it should be delicious anyways. I'll be pulling them out, letting them cool before we take them out of the pans. So those are out of the oven. They're nice golden brown, and you can tap them, and you can tell they're done. It's like a nice hollow sound. You can tap them with the butter and honey if you want a softer crust. My family likes it with a little bit crustier on top, so I'm not going to put some on, but I used to love it with a little bit of butter and honey on it. Just let it melt over the top. And give them about 10 minutes to sit there in the pan, and then you're going to take them out of the bread pan and let them cool until they are all done.